this wouldn't be one of my videos if Benson wasn't here. So for the last 13 years, I've been making videos. In the beginning, I used to use a friend's camera and I would use it to shoot as much as possible. And then I finally got my own camera. I started building up my own equipment and writing a lot of scripts. The tools have changed over the years and I've definitely had to adapt. It started with you had to shoot everything on tape and then everything moved to solid state. Trying to keep up with the digital format has definitely made me go crazy. I quite possibly discovered that I may be insane. The last big purchase I made for a digital camera was the Canon T3i. After I bought it, I used it as much as possible. I entered a film festival with it. I put together a crack team and helped write an 8 minute movie. We shot that movie in 48 hours and got it to the festival. I showed up to the festival and I made some new friends. Well yeah, and I won an award. I tried to repeat that formula at a different festival the following year. Oh my god, is that an Xbox? I didn't win. No! With one win and one not win under my belt, I continued to create and create and create and create and create and create. Eventually, I got a job at a fancy TV station where I got to meet all kinds of cool people. And I got to use their fancy tools to make all the video. But I had also hit creative burnout. It's been about 10 years since I upgraded any of my video equipment and I'm due. I mean, look at this camera. Wouldn't you want to replace it? Well, I found a replacement. Put in a box to my car. Costs more than the car. And off I go. All right, so we got my 50 millimeter. My 24 millimeter, my 85 millimeter, and my 35 millimeter. Right. The extra battery for the Panas, the Black Magic, uh, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema camera. I almost said Panasonic. I was looking at the GH6, but I went with this instead. Pocket Cinema Camera G2. I am super excited. So inside the box booklet and actually I have DaVinci Resolve now I have a the non-free copy power battery the black magic design strap for the camera which I'm totally gonna put on I did not put it on and I'll explain why later look at this bad boy Holy crap, this thing is large. It's big. I love it. We also have, ah, external battery charger. So that's awesome. So you can be charging and running and gunning at the same time. You ready to go pee pee, don't you? Oh, is that a Layla? You ready to go pee pee? Layla wants to go. You ready to go pee pee? And here I am excited, all unboxing all of my lenses, getting ready to set up and shoot my first little bit of video. Let's see how that goes. I was going the wrong way with it. And... Boom. There we go. And... Let's see if it works. You'll notice that that screen looks awful green. I'll show you how to fix that later. A Tamron lens I bought eight years ago for my T3i. I'm going to shoot my first bit of video using that. And I think it's only appropriate. First bit of video needs to be Layla. Hi, Layla. And here it is, the first bit of footage I recorded on this nice new camera. And there is a bit of a learning curve. But once you get the hang of it, it starts looking nice. I picked up the Rokinon cinema lenses because they were legendary in low light conditions, as you can see in this footage. And here's the first sunset I shot with this camera. Now, the only thing about the G2 that sets it apart from the Pro is the lack of ND filters built into the camera. 
Now while the Pocket Cinema camera is just a little bit expensive for shooting standard family functions, that just happens to be the kind of shooter that I am. The Pocket Cinema 6K is also perfect for shooting 120 frames over 30 frames, as you can see in Benson as he tries to get the Xbox logo. Get it, Benson. The world is proud of your service, Benson. Good job. Look at the Layla. Is the Layla. Oh my god, hold on. Wait. It's not even the time for shedding. Yeah, it kind of is. She's shedding because it got way too hot. <laughs> it got way too hot for the Layla. What are you trying to do? So, the camera comes with this nice black magic design strap. I'm thinking I save it. And what I do instead is I take this strap that I won three, three, no, two different awards with. They're both up there. And that one and that one with this strap on a camera. I think that should go in this camera. So it's your lucky camera strap. It is my lucky camera strap. There we go. So you've profaned your new camera. I have. I have blasphemed. And I have a cannon strap on my black magic. But it's award winning. So you gotta keep, you know, like a baseball player, like a catcher, maybe has a lucky mitt. This is my lucky catcher's mitt. Now I also inherited this Nikon F2, the tank, with a nice cache of lenses. And while I can't use this camera, I can definitely use that nice cache of lenses. That's why I bought this nice adapter here. So that way I can plug those lenses into my Blackmagic. And now that I've used it for nearly a month, let me tell you what I think of it. It is an awesome machine. Using it with the Shinobi, I'm able to get some really awesome pictures out of it, especially on a tripod. Using it handheld in this configuration, it weighs about 10 pounds, which is a lot lighter than the C300 that I used to use at work. So a lot of what I see on the internet with this camera is that it's really big and really difficult for people to handle. But it's kind of perfect for me because I can fit my hand, my big ass hand around it, and I can control focus and I can control zoom like that. Go down and get all these wonderful shots here. Just like that. Oh, we can zoom in on this stool and go all the way up. Look at some focus. But you put the same camera in the average person's hands. This is heavy. Yeah, it's only uh, in this current configuration, it's only eight pounds. Only eight pounds? So when I used to work at the TV station, the camera that I used and used to take out the shoots was about 15 pounds. I'm having a hard time holding it if I had to. If you had to control the zoom in and yeah. then you focus like into the picture. Is... <laughs> <laughs> your hand barely goes around. However, my hand going around your hand. Yeah, see? I have, I have <laughs> tiny hands. Well, I have normal small hands. You have normal people hands and I have these ginormous hands. And now that I have a slowly building cache of lenses, I'm able to get almost any kind of image I need. I do love Nikon lenses because there's just something special about Nikkor glass. Jupiter was shining bright in the night sky the other night and I managed to grab some images of that using the time lapse feature. Now the one thing I need to learn with the time lapse feature is how to get rid of all of that ugly grain that just seems to be showing up right there. Now I'm pretty sure it's operator error and it's a kink I'll be able to iron out in a couple months. All of my old T3i stuff plugs right into it as well, so it makes it easy for me to use all of my favorite lens tools, including a bunch of macro adapters I had for my stock 18 to 135 lens that I used to use with the T3i all the time. The menus are super easy to navigate. It's easy to pick out the shot you want at the setting you want at the frame rate you want in the codec that you want. Because I'm broke, I tend to shoot in ProRes because I just don't have the infrastructure to store 6K footage. If you want to white balance your display, it's fairly easy. You just go into your menu, go into setup, click over until you see calibrate screen. Adjust and you can mess with your settings until it's color balanced the way you need it. 
This is the settings I needed to be able to see everything proper on my screen. It may be very different from you, but that is how easy it is to get. And then you hit save and all done. In September of 2022, I paid $2,000 for the camera body, $2,000 for the set of lenses, the Rokinons, and then $2,000 of random accessories to put together the rig. $6,000 to shoot nice videos of Benson. I know Benson appreciates it. And this is where I leave you with this wild footage of Benson being himself in the bushes. Tune in next time. Maybe I'll show you the time I helped my sister replace the suspension on that Nissan. All right. Or maybe it'll be time for Benson's 15th birthday party. See you next time.